Welcome back to another episode of Saving Grace. Today, we've got Mark Wright. Hello, Mark. Hello, Grace. How that are you? That was me giving you a little clap. But no one can hear that. I'm good. How are you? Very good, thank you. Thank Very you good. for coming on. Thanks for having me. I feel like this is iconic. Uh, why? Because, <laughs> because <laughs> I grew up watching your TOWIE light phase. It's not the same now, <laughs> like on TOWIE, but I grew up watching your season. So it how old iconic. are you now, Grace, if you don't I'm mind me asking? I'm 23. 23, so you yeah. would have been like... A wee lamb. No, you'd have been like 10. Yeah, when I my was parents didn't know I was watching it, I'll be right. brutally honest yeah. with you here, but that's what got me into fake tan. Yeah. I fucking loved it. So you started off on TOWIE, yep. and then I feel like you kind of blew up from there. Oh, thanks. That's I mean, all right, you're welcome. So you started there, and you also went on I'm a Celeb. Yep. Fuck that. Tough. Yeah. Like, I can't tell you how tough that was. You know when you got the call, did you think, nah... Or did you straight away was like, yeah? I'll no, because I love the show. It's always been like my favorite show yeah. to watch. And then obviously on Towie, I had to play, I played and lived, you know, exaggerated a character yeah. of myself. So before going off and doing other stuff, I wanted to show completely the real me. Who you are, yeah. Yeah, and I thought the jungle was the perfect opportunity to do it. Well, you always find that as well. Like people who you usually may hate when they go into the jungle, you're like, oh, they're actually quite nice. Yeah, because you I see the real them. There's no hiding there. Yeah. I always say, if you're a bad person, mm -hmm. don't do the jungle. Yeah, because you can't really, especially if you're hungry. Yeah. I'd be a horrible bitch. <laughs> if I was in there on rice and beans, I'd be horrible. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Did you like everyone that you're in there with? Yeah, to a point. <laughs> there, was, there, was, um, yeah. there was a few people that was a little bit more awkward than others. But yeah. I'm just one of them. If I find someone awkward, I'll just walk away from the conversation, join yeah. them with something else. I can't be bothered Go with Go into your like, hammock. Yeah, exactly. You'll be all right. Exactly. And what was your like worst challenge that you did in that? Uh, I've, I hate rats. Like, I hate them. I don't get this because I'm more like insects. Like a rat, I was kind of cute. It's like furry. No, mate, no. rats. <laughs> oh, it's the way they move. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I literally hate them. Right. My dad's got a proper phobia of them. Like hamsters Really? And yeah, and I think I'm the same. And I, they put me in a, um, it was like a group trial. So it was right. like us versus the other half of the camp. Mm -hmm. And it basically was the first one we did. And whoever won got immunity from the first vote off. And no okay. one wants to be first voted off in the jungle. No. So it was all your collective time sleeping in this glass like coffin thing. And in my coffin, I had rats that was put into eight hours. And it was through the night. You're shattered when you do the jungle. Like you're asleep every night at nine o'clock. Like can't, no. can't keep your eyes open. So I had to keep my eyes open, batting these rats off for eight hours. It was the worst experience of my life ever. Genuinely. De definitely. There's not even anything that comes close. I don't think, yeah, because I thought maybe after like a couple of hours, you'd be like at one with the rats, but I guess not. Nah. No. No. Nah. Did you do any eating challenges? I did do eating challenges. My first one I did was against Freddie Starr, uh, who... It just like was disgusting the way he was eating and telling it's the way he was what he was telling me while I was eating. <laughs> yeah making it worse yeah. I, and I'm, I always had my granddad in my mind he was like listen nothing's gonna kill you right just go all the way you'll be Good. fine yeah. yeah exactly but I just couldn't I couldn't physically do it I ate a fermented egg and I was heaving so bad I couldn't get it down that for me I think out of everything I could eat a bollock I could eat whatever but the <laughs> egg is vile because it stinks horrendous like Did you like can you brush your teeth in the jungle like properly you got cold you've got you've got no you ain't got cold gate you've right. got like, a toothpaste it's organic so it doesn't because you obviously you're brushing it into the pond so oh, you can't okay. put chemicals <laughs> yeah, into yeah. like the the uh the, the stream Prime. so yeah no it was hell would you do it again if you got offered no nah, i don't think i would but i don't want to no. say no because you never know you're going to feel in three four years yeah no that's true i don't know if i could do that either I really do. It's more. The I think it's one of them. You got to do it if you get asked for the first time. Really, it's, it's an incredible experience, and it's it's like it sounds so cliche and so yeah. like just you know wanky, whatever. It's just it does like change you. Like you go in there, and you like you completely appreciate everyone you love, everything yeah. you've got in life, the fact that you've got food and constant running water. It's true. It's, it's very very challenging, but at the same time, it's brilliant for you. I just think I couldn't do, you know, when you're showering in the fountain. Yeah. Have you ever watched Grown Ups where there's yeah. the two fit daughters and then there's one in an all-in-one and a swimming <laughs> cap? That would be me if I was in the jungle. No, it wouldn't. And I couldn't deal with that. And I think as well, like Australia's hot. If someone put a snake near me, I'd have a heart attack. <laughs> I don't think I could do that at all. I woke up one night and I don't know if it got shown. I think it did get shown on the show, but 
I basically they they speak on the tannoy every now and then. Oh, is there a tannoy? Yeah, but they, you don't that. see any cameramen, you don't see any producers or anything. You just live oh, right, it's like okay. living in the world. But every now and then, if they need to, they'll speak yeah, on the tannoy. The trees are talking. Yeah, and they woke us up in the middle of the night. It was like, Mark, we need you to do something for us. We need you to step out of the bed extremely slowly. Don't bang your foot on the floor. Shut up. And I was like, what? What do you mean? I spoke through my mic and I was like, there's a brown snake under your bed and they're deadly. Nah. I was like, what am I? It was a hammock as well. So I was like, what am I going to do? So eventually I said, like, I can't put my foot out and the snake had moved to like, the side. So there was no way of me getting out. And they had to send in like the um, animal team, right? Who rescue it and whatever. They came in with like one of them clamps, the little... grabbed it and it was massive. If, I, if they didn't notice it on the cameras, I don't know how they did because it was dark. Yeah. If they didn't notice it, could have come up and bit me on the arse. You know I mean? don't know. Well, that would be an experience for you and the snake. But I <laughs> yeah. think, I don't know why. I always thought maybe they'd like net it all off. You nah. Know, that there'd be no nah. snakes near you. Well, now I'm definitely not doing nope, it. Then you're now in the you've wild. told me you're that. Bush turkeys walking around, you get everything. Uh, yeah. I mean, ah, but like, uh, that's pretty gross. <laughs> ah, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> so you did that and then you also did Challenge UK. Yeah. How was that? It was good. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, I had a rumour that Lockie broke his eye sockets. Yep, he did. Is it that... Was, it was terrible. How does that, that was, happen? That was the first challenge. He fell off like a, um, was it six metre or eight metre like bridge oh, where he was like wrestling ass. someone and he fell and face planted the water too hard. It just like pff, busted his face up. Really? Yeah. And I suppose you've got to sign form so you can't sue. Yeah, probably, Because I'd be yeah. to my lawyers so quick. Yeah. I'm like, have you seen this? <laughs> I don't... What's the worst thing you've seen on that? That was probably the worst thing. That yeah, happened, I mean, yeah. that is pretty. And that was show one as well. We were like, if that's anything to go by, we're for the show, yeah. I feel like that's the original Celebrity SAS. Yeah, it is. Yeah, in America, it's been going on for years, like 40 seasons. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did they bring it to the UK? First the year this year, yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah. Nah. Do you get to try like any <laughs> nah. of the... You don't. No, I'm so. Oh, I was so, going to say, I'm I was taking like, your <laughs> now. <nah off. laughs> Sorry, I do that a lot. Um, I can do. Yeah. I tried the odd thing, like, but not things that are dangerous because they can't obviously let that happen to me because they so, have no hope. You turn up with a broken eye socket. Yeah, exactly. Would you? Oh, yeah, I don't know if I could do something like that. Would you do? I mean, obviously, you are like hosting it, but. Uh, I would, yeah, I think I like to host shows that I would do, if that makes sense. So you would do it? I'd love to do the challenge. Yeah, it's like, God you know, it's proper. Um, it's proper up my street. I love sports. I love challenges. So it'd be that does help, me. I yeah. guess. Yeah, it's the two main bits of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Has anyone ever, like any contestants, ever shagged on the show? I'm picturing Love Island in the war. Is um, what I'm picturing. I don't know if it happened in the villa. There was kissing and all right. that, but they've definitely people that have been with each other when they've left. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, are I there any like? Oh no, you can't say. I can't reveal all that. No, what you're going to ask then? Um, is there anyone that would like proper bicker? Because your stress levels are pretty they high. They all bicker because they're so competitive and they, you know, they've That's, got a lot of yeah. money riding on it. So they were yeah. bickering all the time. And it, that yeah. was sort of point, the premise of the show. It was um, you, it was all mind games. It was all trying to trick people into thinking you're going to do one thing but do the other. So right. there was a lot of bickering when it came to that, yeah. Who would your like ideal lineup be that you'd want to see on the show? Don't say me because I'm busy that way. So. <laughs> um, I don't know. Beckham, Kevin Claire. Hart, yeah. The Rock, Kim Kardashian. Oh, and she'd bounce from her ass. I think that would be a good one if she fell. I'd want David Attenborough as bounce well. Bounce off her bum. Yeah. Um, David Attenborough, yeah, but... Yeah. No one would want to hit him. Yeah, that's true. They and might that's win. the you issue. They might win from that, you're right. They would just jump off the bridge themselves. Instead yeah. Of <laughs> Yeah. they'd sacrifice themselves yeah. yeah I'm here for it what tips would you have just don't take it too seriously that's what a lot of them did they took it too yeah. seriously but then again that's what the challenge is it is a serious it's not like the jungle where it's like a bit of fun this yeah. is it's serious there's a lot of money on the line do you know what I mean and that's competitive people's problems yeah exactly that's like, why it'd be my problem yeah, oh are you competitive very is there something in life that you've been overly competitive about and you've been like that was a bit embarrassing yeah Quite a few, actually. Name one. Board games at home with Michelle's family. Oh, like, like Monopoly. We Monopoly once. I knew you were going to say that. it was about one in the morning. The game was still going on. It was just yeah. me and her brother left on the board. Yeah. And he had, he was so far in front of me, there was no way I was going to win. Yeah. But in my head, I was like, I've got to still win. We you played could. till 4am because it was we had some money on it. And I was like, you're not, I'm not, he was like, Mark, look, we need to go to bed. Yeah. You ain't going to win. I was like, no, I'm not, I'm going to keep not. going. <laughs> we played till 4am. Everyone else went to bed. It was just me and him playing. 
And my wife the next day was like, listen, this competitiveness has just got to slow down. Yeah, I bet she was absolutely fuming. <laughs> screaming down the house over a bit of yeah. uh, a bit of Monopoly. I love that. <laughs> so, oh my God, this is what I wanted to get to. So your new family show. Yep. This is giving me Jack Whitehall and his dad, but more relatable. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense. Jack Whitehall and his dad's a good show though. It is. It's a very good show. But I feel like you're a very high competitor with this. <laughs> For people who haven't heard about it, whatever, sell it. It's called, it a, it's called A Right Family Holiday. It's yeah. me, my dad and my brother traveling the UK, doing experiences from sky jumping, sky jumping, sky diving, sky diving to bungee jumping. God forbid. Jet skiing, just everything you can imagine, pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone, reconnecting with each other and mm -hmm. opening up about subjects and things that we need to get off our chest. Was it your idea or did someone like approach you with no, it? No, it was my idea, yeah. I wanted to take my dad. My dad sort of lost his confidence in lockdown and his brother died and he nearly died of COVID. So did his other brother. There was three of them in hospital Jesus. at once. Jesus. And then my brother's coming to the end of his football career and he's really struggling with that mentally mm -hmm. that, you know, he's coming to the end and he doesn't know what he's going to do after. So I wanted to show him there's more to life than football. Yeah. And me, I've just been so busy traveling and I was living in America for a while and mm -hmm. um, I just felt like I needed to be more present and be with my mum, you know, yeah. my dad and my brother a bit more. I've lost lost a lot of time from that. So I just came up with this idea of us going on this trip and yeah. getting it filmed at the same time so we can encourage other people to do the same. Did it take convincing at all? Because if you came up to me like if my mum went yeah we're gonna go skydiving I would tell her to go fuck herself yeah. <laughs> would you actually say those words no I'd say no thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um th there were certain things that you needed to convince I wanted right. to jump out the plane and that I had to convince me that's to fair. do it yeah yeah but it was um I'm scared I have a heart attack yeah you know what I mean I feel like that's a very concerning thing yeah well, my dad did pass out on the bungee jump. Did he? Yeah, completely. <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny, but He I can't was think. hanging upside down, completely passed out. We oh, were, my God. We proper shat ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That and that's all on you because it's your idea exactly. as well. Yeah. Like, We've pushed it one step too far. Yeah, now. you get nothing in the wheel after that. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, because I saw a clip on TikTok the other day and it was you guys were driving in the car and your dad said something and you were like, we don't care. You say it every single time. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like it's cool because it's relatable. Like when I go, like if my boyfriend say, he's like, I worked on that house. Didn't give a shit and I never asked. And they always put their two cents Didn't in. Didn't give a shit and never asked. They always do it and no one cares. But it was really cute. Have you ever had like, not ever had, but did you have arguments filming it? Yeah, because at times, like you, you, you argue with your family at times, don't you? Like just being, I love that it's on camera. Being together all yeah. the time, you know. So, yeah, the odd argument, like that one you just mentioned there. Yeah. Like, my dad just go. He always points things out on the road. Like, oh, look, there's that, and it's like you don't even know what that is. She's yeah. reading out a sign. <laughs> yeah. You're trying to be a no. Yeah. yeah. So there was little bickers like that, but we don't really argue properly. Our family. Did you ever get worried that people would take some of the clips the wrong way? <clears throat> Weirdly. So this was the most I've ever been me on telly. Right. Um, and I planned that. You know, I'm 13 years into the industry now. And I was like, look, I'm doing a show with my dad and my brother. I wanted to do this trip anyway. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm filming it is because I want other people to, you know, do this and t go away with their family because life's too short. So I thought, this ain't really work. This has just got to be me enjoying this trip yeah. and I'll allow the camera to come along. Right. So I was completely myself. So there was moments that, I thought people might be like, oh, he's being too competitive or he's yeah. talking to his dad in a, you know, in a rude way yeah. telling him to stop talking about history. <laughs> so yeah, there was moments like that, but I didn't really care because I just wanted it to be just me, you know, people yeah. have to take that or leave it. Some people like that though. Like sometimes they're like, well, I lost this person. You can't be rude to them. But sometimes like my mum is annoying. <laughs> Why and is she annoying? She just is a mum. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if she tells me to clean my room one more time, I'm 23. <laughs> and I should clean my room, but I'm not going to. Do you know what I mean? I feel like it's like a family thing, but it's funny that it's on air. Yeah. What is the funniest moment that you had filming it? Ah, uh, oh, we, it didn't go on the show annoyingly. So basically we used to have a night team that would stay with us, right. but only up with one camera. So they couldn't shoot everything properly. Okay. And we slept in tents in the Peak District and we had blow up beds. But yeah. the blow up bed just fitted in the tent. So basically it filled out the right. whole tent. Yeah. So me and my brother, we got a pin and we went and like stabbed, stabbed <laughs> yeah. my dad's mattress. Oh, bless and him. And the bed went down. And um, it, like, probably about 10 minutes after him being on the floor, you just heard, Josh. <laughs> so my brother, he always made yeah. my brother. 
Josh, who's let it down? <laughs> well, what are you talking about? And he came out of the tent, all his hair was sticking up. He was oh. pissing down the rain. We were crying. Like, that is so crying. evil. Yeah. Was he fuming? He, he won't at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I feel like it's weird because you must get close to the camera crew as well. Yeah, Because really they're close. constantly with you. Exactly that. Do you really get close. separation anxiety when they leave? No, not really. He's... I'd be like doing other four seasons. We can keep going. <laughs> yeah. We can keep going if you like. No, you do. Because obviously you have, we were doing like three days an episode. So mm -hmm. after the third day, we'd stay in a hotel and then start the next episode like right, somewhere okay. else. So that hotel night would always have drinks in the pub and all that. But the other nights we were right. staying in the locations like down in a cave or in a tent or on a plane. Oh my God. So um, we weren't with them. Oh, that's fine for them. Yeah, exactly. I bet they were, they were loving hotels, that. They were like, yeah. bye. Yeah, exactly. Would you ever do, because I know like Billy Fairs and stuff, they all do like the mummy diaries, the baby diaries. Would you ever do anything like that? Again, I never say never, but I'm not sure. Because when you do a show like that, by the way, I love them shows. So yeah, love same. The it's my guilty diaries. pleasure, they're, I'll they're be brilliant. honest. Yeah. yeah, and the girls have smashed it with that. They've found a niche and it's great. But for me, I don't really... Not yet, anyway. I don't yeah. really want to let make the show be about my life. So, right. like the show I've done with my dad and my brother, we are showing the real world. So, and essentially, it's the mm -hmm. same. But the, the but premise it's not of the solely based on that. The yeah. premise of the show is us doing things. Mm -hmm. Whereas, if the premise of the show is about your life and having to create those dramatic moments through your personal life, yeah, I find it. That's why I left Howie so quick. I think I, I was only on it ten months. No, no one remembers that. You know, it's starting it feels to, like you want it for ages, I though. Know, everyone says it. Yeah. You put your your footprint in there. Fair yeah, fair. but I just I, I struggled with it a little bit. I struggled yeah. with comp like letting to create a good scene. Mm -hmm. I had to do something with my personal life to make that happen. Yeah, and I feel like the times then were different now. Like now, you can argue about like it doesn't have to be a really intense argument because also there was no mental health shit back then as well. Yeah, they didn't give a shit. They were like going through something air it do you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean they did not care at all so I think yeah you're right it's a bit intense and also my life would be too boring to do something like that too like the whole episode would be like I'm going to Aldi my mum's told me to clean my room my mum's told me to clean me I'm still living at home yeah no I've you got nothing definitely to do definitely wouldn't be boring where'd you live actually don't say anyone oh no so they all know Cambridge Cambridge like punts yeah I love yeah, it there. posh love it there. oh have you been yeah many times yeah really like football there it's not that far from Essex though as well no to be it's not fair. that far and I I'm that side it. of Essex as well. Just like I'm 15 minutes from Stansted. So are you? Yeah. Oh, that you can catch <coughs> flights. Yeah. You can catch flights. Yeah. I, I claim the Cambridge, even though like when people say, oh, where did you go to college? I'm like Cambridge, but it was actually the regional college. Right. But they don't have to know. Yeah. Of course. They not. automatically assume you're smart. Yeah. Anyway, enough about I do that. love Cambridge. A beautiful place. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know why I'm taking that. <laughs> thank you. Um, America. Let me just cough. Okay. <coughs> go for that. There you go. Cool. Right. <laughs> America, you went there. Yeah. Yeah. Where I did you, where, <laughs> yeah, full stop next time. Where did you go in America? So I moved to LA. Um, it's a scary place. Yeah. Have you been? No. Yeah. It's... I'd be eating alive there. I think. Yeah. <laughs> no, you'd be good there because you're confident. No, it's, um, uh, yeah, I lived there for like two years. So I used to go there all the time. And I, when I used to go there and work, I used to be like, oh, this, I just would love, I used to be obsessive LA. That's why right. I did a show called Hollywood Nights once because, mm -hmm. ITV were like, what show do you want to do? What do you want to do? We'll do anything <laughs> with you. And I was like, I want to take my mates to Hollywood. I used to love the entourage. I used to love anything like The Hangover, anything that was based in LA. Yeah. Obviously, that was Vegas, but they started in LA. Anything that was on oh, the hills. Mm -hmm. And I was just obsessed with it. So I used to go out there and have meetings like over the years. And then one time I was here and a job went wrong. And I was like, look, you know what? I've had enough of it in the UK. I want to go to LA and try and make it happen. Yeah. And I went there and got a job and stayed for two years. Is this when there's a story of you went somewhere and you said, I want to do this. And they were like, we have loads of people come in. Yeah. You need to pr tell that. Yeah. So there was no, there was, <laughs> no, there was no way I was ever going to like, so basically I went to, I went there and, you know, I used to try and have meetings and stuff like that. And, you know, in LA it's like, oh yeah, you're great, man. We'll give you a coin. You don't hear nothing. Yeah, of course. And then I went back out there one day, I run my agent. I was like, listen, I'm, I'm coming out. I'm not leaving until I get a job. Like I'm going to quit my jobs back in the right. UK and I'm going to have nothing to come back to. So I have to get a job. <laughs> yeah. He was like, all right, let's do it. So we go out there and I went to uh, Universal Studios mm -hmm. just to go to the theme park. And I, I saw Extra being filmed and I love Universal Studios. It was yeah. under the palm trees. The studio was outside. I was like, oh mate, this would be an absolute dream to get this job. So I told my agent, he was like, Mark, it ain't going to happen. Like, it's Mario Lopez is the host. He's an A-list, you know, star. Yeah. 
there's two females with him. They don't have another male. It's, that's what it is to set up from the show right. for 25 years. And I just went and had a meeting with, a, with the boss and I went and had, I'm not going to tell the whole story, but I went and had like three, four meetings. I kept knocking on the door, knocking on the door, knocking on the door. And eventually yeah. she was like, I'll give you a shot. Go and get me an interview, do an interview with someone. And then um, we'll see how it goes. I did it. And she was like, look, thanks. It was brilliant. If we ever need anyone mm -hmm. freelance, we'll let you know. I was like, no, you need to get a job. <laughs> yeah. Flew back to the UK and then something was bothering me. I was like, if I've managed to get on the show in Hollywood and a mm -hmm. double Emmy award winning show, there's got to be a chance I can get this job. Yeah. And then I just went out there and like, I, I was laying in bed one night, 11 o'clock, found out one of the female hosts had left. My agent called me and I was like, right, I'm going to Heathrow. I went straight to Heathrow Airport in the middle of the night, got the next flight, an Air France flight it was, got the next flight, oh, I can't remember what it was, got the <laughs> next flight to LA, um, arrived and uh, knocked on the door about, I think it was about 12 or one o'clock in the afternoon. She was like, what are you doing here? I was like, I've heard that someone's just left the show. Yeah. She was like, yeah. I was like, well, I want the job. And she was like, Mark, it's a female. I was like, you're giving me the job. Like, yeah, you, you can put a wig on. I'm not here. Yeah, I'm not leaving until you give me this job. And then she right. did. And I got the job. Persistence is key. 100%. You hounded that woman. Yeah. She had literally. no choice. Exactly. Do you prefer LA or the UK? UK. You do? Yeah. Because I've heard Hence that... Hence I moved back. Well, that does make sense. Yeah. I feel like I've heard a lot of things about LA. Like, it's very clouty over there. Like, it's very... I don't know what the word is. Like, influencery. So, LA... Like I, I moved near this local pub that I knew because I, lo I love having a local, yeah. right? And I went to that pub two, three times a week right. for two years and not once did I see the same person. There's no community. So everyone in LA oh, really? is not from LA. They're all there working. Okay, and right, yeah. It's an amazing place. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. But there's no homely community feeling. It's just you're yeah. there just working. So I love going there to work, but to live there is it's extremely tra challenging. yeah. Have you ever seen someone, like, who's the most famous person you've seen out there? Well, I've interviewed a lot of them. Go on. Oh, oh, yeah, who's the best person you've interviewed? I've interviewed Denzel Washington, Mark Wahlberg. Shut up. Yeah, Samuel Jackson. Um, I've interviewed Kim Kardashian and Khloe Kardashian. Stop. Yeah. Look. Now you've caught my attention. Yeah. Kim K, what's she like? Do you know what? If, when people say to me, who surprised you the most? Who was right. the like... She was amazing. We, we Our camera crew set the cameras up to, like, we're setting them up. Yeah. And someone called her in. Like, she didn't come in with a team or anything. She just came okay. in on her own. And my, my producer, like, proper crapped himself. And he was like, oh, oh Kim, Kim, we're too. not ready yet. We're not ready yet thinking that she's going to get the ump. Right. She was like, that's all right. I'll just sit down. So she just sat like this with me. And they were still, like, 20 minutes from setting up. Literally just talking about oh life, God. where I was from, what my family are like. Started the interview. She was amazing. And every time I saw her after that, knew who I was instantly. I love that. She was just lovely, lovely, down-to-earth girl. Is there any? Well, I called her, do you know what? I, actually, <laughs> I called her a girl on my Instagram. But that's just a Cockney thing from where I'm I from. I was going to say, I think that's, yeah. Yeah, and I called her like, what a lovely girl, Kim Kardashian. I got yeah. hounded for it. Why? People were saying that it was disrespectful. Yeah, but if anything, it's keeping her young. Yeah. Do you no. know what I mean? I wouldn't, I wouldn't People mind. People didn't like it. Fuck them. <laughs> Who's someone that you've been really starstruck by? Do you know what? Weirdly, when I'm interviewing people, mm -hmm. I don't get starstruck at all. Really? But when I see someone accidentally, then I'm starstruck. I suppose because you have time to prepare. I, I, I think when you, I think it's when you're seeing someone, you, you you feel like you're in that workplace. But if I'm in a restaurant, I saw Jennifer Aniston in a restaurant once, and that oh, made God. me feel proper weird. Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. <laughs> at a bar made Shut me feel up. proper weird. But when you're interviewing these people, you don't really feel like that. I think sometimes it's weird because <clears> you know when you interview people that you look up to or whatever. Everything's. I don't know how to describe this, but every, you say, like, oh, they're normal. So then you don't have the same outlook on celebrities as you did before. Yeah, yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah, no, 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 exactly what you mean, yeah. So it's a bit like, oh. They're no longer untouchable. Yeah, exactly. They're just one of Apart you. Apart from Paris Hilton. Yeah, I've interviewed her a couple of times. Oh my God, anyone you haven't? Jesus. She's actually a nice lady. Is she? She's a really nice lady, yeah. Apparently it's all an act though. Like she's actually quite smart. Yeah, cool. Listen, you don't become that rich if you're not smart. Bastards. Simple. I love that for her though. Yeah. Um, who's someone that you want to interview? I mean, it sounds like you've interviewed everyone. No, but... weirdly. So I did interview a lot of people. Like it be Gary Oldman, Matt Damon. I interviewed everyone. But the only, the, the, the famous four, I call them. Right. Jennifer Aniston, Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie and Leonardo DiCaprio. And they're the four I never interviewed. Really? Mm. That's a good four though, to want yeah. to interview. Like yeah. Angelina Jolie, I'd bow. Yeah. I think if I tick off those four, that's it. I've sort of done nearly everyone. I, if you interview Leonardo DiCaprio, I want you to ask about his love life. I need you. <laughs> well, 
We'll be there all day. Yeah, no, it's so true. But I want to know if it's true that he cuts off at 25. Is Leo but your hall pass? He'd, no, the thing is, I, who's my, I think Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp, yeah. Yeah, because he's like, he looks like he doesn't wash, like he looks scraggly. And I like that. So you like a smelly man? Yeah. My boyfriend looks clean, so I don't really know what happened there, but I think <laughs> that would be my whole for a difference. Yeah, exactly. With Leo, I feel, I feel like, I don't know, I'd be a bit too intimidated. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Hate it there. Also, you did Soccer Aid. Yep. A few times. Six times I've done Soccer Aid. A lot. You might as well just stay on the pitch and wait for every year. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely love Soccer Aid. It's the best thing ever. Like, really? Ever. Yeah. It's amazing. It's weird because... I'll turn it on. I don't know who's playing. And I'm like, is that Chunks? Yeah. Or something like that. I get really confused. Yeah. What's the best year you've done it? Like there was the a really good year, lineup. I scored and I got man of the match. So oh, did you? The first year, yeah. Yeah, fair. I guess you can't beat that, can you? No. <coughs> what was it like? So you did with Chunks, H. Yeah. What was that like? Brilliant. They're both, both good lads. Uh, yeah, they're both really funny, young, vibrant. Yeah. Always bantering around the training ground. They're great. Oh, really? Do you ever get nervous before you go on? Yeah, you do, because there's a massive crowd. You're playing right. against amazing players. So you don't want to F it up, because if you do, everyone's going to Do you like to it. like role play that you're David Beckham before you go on? <laughs> uh, no, nah, but I definitely role play that I'm a footballer. Like I'm a you pro. Do? <laughs> I definitely yeah. go out there in my new white boots, like this is it. I'm playing yeah. in the cup final. Have you played with, um, is it Noah Beck? Yes, last year against him. What's he like? Because apparently he's um, really good. Unbelievable. Really? Yeah, pro level. It upsets brilliant. me because he's American yeah. and they shouldn't be good at English football. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It pisses me off. Yeah, no, he's actually really good. Really good player. Yeah. Really good. It's a shame that he was on the opposite team as well. Yeah, I know. I bet you were thinking, for fuck's sake. Yeah, why is it not on our team? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you going to continue doing that until yeah, I mean, you break a hip? Yeah, this year I couldn't do it because of work, but next year... Yeah, if I'm asked back, I'll play 100%. Right. Is there... Right, what shows would you do? I'm going to reel them off. Strictly. Done it. you done Strictly? Yeah, I got to the final. Shut Strictly. up. Yeah. What year did you do that? 2014. Oh, my mum. You ain't done your research. No, see? I'm sorry. I've got I'm a celeb, though. You've so done I think, three. You know? You've, done, <laughs> you've done everything. Hang on. Yeah. Oh, I've done something at me too. <laughs> you've done everything I've else. I've done everything else. Yeah. I always do this. When I did Alison Hammond, I didn't even realise she went on I'm a Celeb. So it's just a common <laughs> theme now. Yeah. So you did Strictly? Yeah. And you got to the final? Yeah. Don't know how, because I was shocking. That's mental, though, because I don't know. I can't imagine you doing the Foxtrot. Oh, no. Do you know what? I loved Strictly in terms of the experience, but I didn't love it because I'm so competitive. Yeah. And I'm not that good at it. So <laughs> I had hard. to train so many hours. It took up my whole life. That's the thing. Don't you train every day? Yeah, all day. God forbid. Day. Yeah. I don't know. I guess it's good for like the weight loss and shit, so maybe, but... It yeah, is it is brilliant. That's an amazing experience. And you're learning something that, you know, to a level that you would never would have the chance to do again. Did you do it when, um, is it Len Goodman? Yeah. Was on it. Len was still on there, yeah. Oh, I love Len. Yeah. Okay. I can't, I just, I can't believe you did Strictly. Yeah. I couldn't imagine that because I'd be like, that's so intimidating. Yeah. Because you know the people in the crowd as well. I'm telling they're you They're on now, that shit. Doing that show. Yeah is the most nerve-wracking thing you it seems ever it. do. It's worse than soccer age, 60,000 people. Because yeah. you are so scared you're going to forget your steps. Like, I used to literally shake before I went out. Really? Yeah. And I suppose every it's not like with soccer aid, at least uh, you can see different people. Well, soccer aid... It's just you. And soccer aid is like something I grew up doing. I grew up playing football, you know, so... Yeah. And it's charity. You can't shit on charity. Yeah, exactly. You can't. Yeah. I do, have, you done, have you done Dancing on Ice? No. Okay, thank God. That's one thing I couldn't... like. Imagine falling over on the ice. Do you see Gemma Collins yeah, fall? Yeah, that's the best thing I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Uh, only because, you know, she wasn't too hurt. If she was hurt, it wouldn't have been the best thing, but it was... No, it hilarious. was quite funny, though. That and her falling through the stage at the... Uh, oh, she has really bad luck. Yeah, well, it's not... I think that's what blew her up. Yeah, Since I agree. When she fell through the stage, did that dance on ice thing, that's when her career went... Whew. 100%. Do you still keep in contact with anyone from TOWIE? Oh, because he's he was my only mate on oh there, Oh, my really. God, He's Arch. the only one I knew, yeah. Yeah, so you don't speak to Gemma not really if I see Gemma I do I think yeah you know, I love Gemma but she I don't I don't speak to her on the phone or whatever yeah I couldn't imagine you guys having like like a text I feel like she'd use emojis and you wouldn't <laughs> if that makes any sense no she's a nice girl Gemma I love that so anything else coming up you've got the show what are your plans um obviously I've got my radio show I do every Saturday on heart love that. Uh, just plan to just keep cracking on you know like one one day to the next i love yeah. doing different things i've never 
I've never really stuck to one thing. I always leave and change something quickly. I think that's good though. Fingers in all the pies. Yes, exactly. People can't get bored of you then. Exactly that. And I like to end the pod with what advice would you give to me to save Grace? Can be anything. Just keep being you. You're fun. Love that. Vibrant. Keep going. Honest. Yeah. Open. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to keep going? Your head won't be able to get, get out more. of the halo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, you, you, listen, just keep being you. Just don't try and change for anyone. Love and that. And just enjoy what you're doing, which you seem like you are. Stunning advice. It makes a change. Someone told me not to shit in a paper bag before, so it's like a nice... <laughs> Maybe I'm not funny Happy enough. medium. Thank you so much for Thank coming on. Thank you so on. much, Grace. It's been 10 cents. <laughs> um, if you've been watching, give it a like and subscribe. And if you've been listening, give it a five-star review and a follow. Bye. Say bye. 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 <laughs>